Here's the first. Once again, I've got this alkyl group, this phenyl ring that has a methoxy group attached to it, bonded to this borane over here. And I'm reacting that with this alkyl bromide, PDL2, and hydroxide. How in the world do I determine what the product that's going to be formed is out of this reaction? The way I do that is by asking myself, what group is attached to the boron? Well, of course I can see that it's this group. The next question I ask myself is, where is my halogen in my other reactant? Here it is. Now, for the sake of keeping track of stuff, I've also numbered the carbons in my alkyl halide. One, two, three. So what type of product do I end up getting? Well, all I do is take this alkyl halide and I replace the bromine with whatever group is attached to my boron. So my product ends up being this. You'll note once again, I've got my carbons, one, two, three, that originated from my alkyl bromide. I hope you can see clearly that what's happened is that the bromine has been replaced by the alkyl chain that was attached to my boron. This is exactly what a Suzuki reaction does. It's super cool, and parenthetically, I have to mention, most of these reactions in real life are super easy to run. I've run many, many, many of them, and they work very nicely. Here's our next example. I've got my alkyl borane reacting with this alkyl halide, in this case an alkyl iodide. I, of course, treat it with palladium L2 and hydroxide. How do I determine what the product is? My first question that I ask is, what is the group attached to my boron? Well, of course, it's this group. The next question I ask is, where is my halogen in my alkyl halide coupling partner? It's right here. For the sake of keeping track of stuff, I'm going to number my carbons in my alkyl halide. One, two, three, four. And now I remember, in a Suzuki reaction, what happens is the group that's attached to my boron ends up taking the place of the halide in my alkyl halide. Thus, my product ends up being this product. And for the sake of keeping track of stuff, I've numbered my atoms. One, two, three, four. That came from my original alkyl halide. One thing that I have to stress is the importance of the fact that this isopropyl group attached to my phenyl ring ends up being in the same relative position as it was to the boron in my original alkyl borane. You'll notice that this boron is attached to a position that's one, two, three away from this isopropyl group, and this alkyl chain from my alkyl halide also ends up being attached one, two, three away from the isopropyl group. This is the Suzuki reaction. The next coupling reaction in our lineup involves taking an alkene, a palladium L2 catalyst, and triethylamine. This type of reaction is called a heck reaction. And no, that isn't supposed to be G-rated profanity. It's actually called that because it's named after somebody whose last name was heck. Here's how that reaction goes down. I take a vinyl or an aryl halide. Now, this R group, once again, has to be in sp2 hybridized carbon, in a carbon-carbon double bond, or in a benzene ring of some sort. So this can't be an sp3 hybridized carbon for the heck reaction. I react it with an alkene that can be attached to a hydrogen or an alkyl chain on one side, and more or less any group that I want on the other side. I treat it with palladium L2 and triethylamine, and what ends up occurring is this hydrogen or alkyl group over here ends up being replaced by the vinyl or aryl group attached to my halogen on this side, giving me this alkene product where R and Z are always, always trans to each other. Let me show you some specific examples. I've got this vinyl iodide right here being reacted with this alkene. You'll notice that this alkene happens to be attached to all of this exciting stuff over here. I treat it with palladium L2 and triethylamine, and what ends up occurring is I form a bond between this carbon that was formerly bonded to the iodine and this terminal carbon in my alkene, as you can see right here. All of this stuff over here ends up being trans to all of the stuff over here when this bond forms. In the second example, I've got a phenyl bromide being treated with this molecule called ethene, or sometimes just ethylene. I react it with palladium L2 and triethylamine under heck conditions. I end up forming a bond between this carbon and one of these two carbons in the alkene. This is the heck reaction. Which brings us to some excellent questions from our problem set. I want you to predict the products of the following heck reactions. Now, of course, I'm going to show you the answers to these in the next slides. So if you wish to, you're welcome to pause the video now and attempt them on your own first. 
In our first example, I've got this vinyl bromide, that is a bromine coming directly off of an alkene, being treated with palladium L2, triethylamine, and yes, this ET group stands for ethyl, not extraterrestrial. I react it with this alkene. So how do I navigate my way through this problem and determine what the product is that's going to be formed? What I need to do is first of all ask myself, where is the terminal carbon in my alkene coupling partner? It's of course right here. Where is my halogen in my vinyl or aryl halide? It's of course right here. And for the sake of keeping track of stuff, I've numbered all of the carbons in our alkene coupling partner, one, two, and three. So what ends up occurring is this carbon, carbon one, ends up taking the place of my bromine in my vinyl bromide, ultimately giving rise to this product, where I've got my carbons one, two, and three right here. So once again, you can see carbon one that originated from this alkene, forming a bond with the carbon that was originally bonded to this bromine. The double bond that's formed here always ends up putting these two groups trans to each other in the product. Here's our next example. I've got this phenyl iodide reacting with this alkene. I once again ask myself the question, where is the terminal carbon in my carbon-carbon double bond in my alkene coupling partner? The answer is, of course, right here. And where is my halogen in my aryl or vinyl halide? It is, of course, right here. I'm going to once again number my carbons, one, two, three, in my coupling partner so that we can keep track of stuff. As I've stated before, what ends up occurring is that this carbon right here, which is bonded to my iodine, ends up forming a bond with carbon one in my alkene, ultimately giving rise to this product, one, two, three. As stated before, these two groups, the phenyl ring and all of this exciting stuff over here, always end up being trans to each other around the double bond. So here are some problem set problems I'll throw at you, but let you do on your own. I want you to predict the products of the following heck reactions. I've got two different vinyl halides reacting with the same alkene coupling partner with palladium L2 and triethylamine. I'm not going to show you the answers to these, but will instead let you work them out on your own. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.